because of his elite experience at Aston Villa in the Premier League. He's the one who wins the favour. So Iran on the break early on. They are, of course, in the all white, Australia in the yellow shirts. Look, scenes here, and Azadi as the ball runs out on the far side as Sadavi couldn't reach it for Iran. Mark Bosnich in goal for Australia tonight. That's Sadavi, one of the new boys. Three new players have entered this Irani side. Iranian side. Raduka pushed in the back clearly by the number 20 for Iran, Pashit Zadeh. Well, talking to here for Harry Kill. Quite sure what that was for, but Aurelio Vidmar, who's 30, talks to the 19 year old and just tells him to calm his nerves just a little bit. Relax and get on with the game is the message. Zelich over the ball. Little clip into the penalty area. Slater trying to win it for Australia. Here's Ali Dai, the true legend here of Iranian football. The wall has been won in the tackle. Here's a CZ playing on the right tonight. We're used to him on the left, and Madovic here takes over. Slater coming in to close down his man quickly. And Moore with the high ball. And Bosnich coming up to get the ball. A long ball from Bosnich. Kuhl up against Hockpour. Good touch on by Kuhl, who was looking to find Viduka. This is more promising for Australia. Slater on the ball. Whipping in the cross. Away for Iran is Mansourian, Ali Dai. Moore in strongly on Ali Dai, and he fouls him. And the roar from the Azadi Stadium as Ali Dai is put to ground by Craig Moore. Hokpur, let it run. Kuhl will chase. Hokpur will get there. And used his body well, the experienced. Defender for Iran, back to Paravani. It's a long ball, Dai, who's big and tough, and it's given away by Moore in a dangerous position. Chance here for Iran. A little ball through, and Tobin will clear for Australia. But a nervous moment in the heart of the Australian defence. Flipped on by Ali Dai. Away by Horvath. And Vidmar did very well to use his body there and to win the free kick for Australia. Challenge coming in from Sadavi. Free kick to Australia. Duca challenging. Oh, there's a free kick for Australia right on the edge of the penalty area. Mark Maduka using his body to good effect. It's a young forward line for Australia tonight. Kewell, 19, Maduka, who's 22. Abit Zadeh, the veteran goalkeeper for Iran he's somewhat of a loose cannon we saw him against Japan last week provide us with some very unusual moments but Australia might hope to exploit a weakness in his nature as the free kick comes in it didn't miss by much either from Zilic barely half a meter in it just over the crossbar there from Ned Zilic as we see a replay there, and it did not miss by much there. Fine effort from the French-based midfielder. And Australia's last game was almost two months ago 
against Tunisia in the north of Africa. They won by three goals to nil in an outstanding performance away from home. Oh, Zelic, that's a great ball forward. Australia on the attack here. A little ball across. Viduka! Oh, a golden opportunity for Australia there. And a very promising move indeed. Australia really showing that they've come to Tehran with an attitude that is positive and attack-minded. If you've just joined us, it's five and a half minutes gone here at the Azadi Stadium. We believe there have been some sound difficulties, but we hope you're with Johnny Warren and myself now here. And that's offside. And Australia have started well here at the Azadi Stadium. And that move earlier on, John, was a very good beginning for the Socceroos. It is the, the good sign, uh, Paul, is that uh, Zelic in excellent touch. We've seen the free kick, we've seen the pass through to Foster to create the chance for Viduka, and Australia would be well pleased at the moment. ball forward Tobin will get there before is easy but will is easy get there before the ball reaches the goal line Tobin goes back to Bosnich and the Aston Villa keeper concedes a corner the pitch here at the Azadi is very bumpy and the short one is taken there's only one out man out there for Australia the ball comes across it's a dangerous one and Foster composed on the edge of the penalty area Vidmar with a risky pass inside, and it's been won back by Iran. Tony Vidmar gets there first. And a throw in to Iran. Hokbur on the ball. High ball into the area. Bosnich backpedaling and takes it comfortably. Mark Bosnich very much a talking goalkeeper, and Australia need all the volume that they can muster up in their defence. Iran are forward again. The crowd are starting to warm to the home team. And that in itself is a phenomenal lift for the players. And this is fine football by Iran. Cross is blocked. Aurelio Vidmar can get there. Away by Vidmar. Viduka. Nice turn from Mark Viduka and he's fouled and brought to the ground. Unique marking system at the back for Australia in that Tobin going with Azizi, the smaller, trickier player. Craig Moore with Ali Day. I wonder if those roles should be reversed. Tobin uh, much stronger in the air, more, more nimble on the feet. You would think a switch there uh, would be better served for Australia. We'll wait and see on that one. Here is Ali Day. 51 international goals. The crowd here absolutely love Ali Dayi. He plays in Germany for Stuttgart. If you take another look at the shot coming in, it was well over the bar from Ali Dayi. But interesting to note, both Ali Dayi and the winger Azizi, after the game against Japan last week, they both returned to Germany to play for their clubs on Wednesday night, which is quite a phenomenal scenario and then they raced back here to Tehran and arrived late last night for the game so it's quite amazing that a they could be released and b that they would want to leave their country at such a crucial stage of the World Cup campaign but many people observers from the Australian media that are here in Tehran feel that Iran off the field are a little disheveled that's further evidence for that as Viduka flicks inside. Foster will get there first. He's got two men on him and it's just bundled off the ball. Zelic couldn't get a tackle in quickly. And Iran are forward. Astilli is brought to the ground by Slater. Astilli is down. The referee is Pierre Luigi Perotto from Italy. A man very experienced at all facets of refereeing and all levels of refereeing as well. As Kuehl gets the ball on the steal. Harry Kuehl running at the defense. Still Kuehl. Here's Zelic. 
taking it through and he's brought down on the edge of the Iranian penalty area again a second opportunity for Australia from the set piece and Zelic did well to control an awkward ball but he was tripped there Zelic took the last one Aurelio Vidmar and Mark Baduka are over this one the goalkeeper Abedzada is watchful there is everyone behind the ball from an Iranian perspective Zelic is over the ball again Baduka is not too far away well, the wall is being marched back Abedzada not happy with a couple of things well, 11 minutes gone here at the Azadi Stadium. Australia have started promisingly indeed. As we wait for the free kick, tap to Viduka with the shot into the wall. Viduka again, loose ball, and that's a goal kick. And every decision that goes the way of the Iranians is greeted by the most phenomenal roar here. They say the capacity of the Azadi is around about 100,000, but there are no spaces on the stairwells at all, so the estimate crowd tonight would be somewhere around 120 to 130,000. And Australia are more than holding their own in the opening few minutes. Ali Doyi. Oh, that's a fine switch there from Estili. Forward is the number seven, Mansourian. Iran forward here Radovicia on the edge of the penalty area away by Moore and the ball goes all the way back to Abit Zadeh well in the World Cup qualifiers Iran won two and drew two of their four home games but of the two games that they drew 1-1 one, one against Saudi Arabia and 0-0 against Kuwait they were by far the better side and both games could have been something like a 4 or 5-1 scoreline they beat China 4-2 and they trashed Qatar 3-0 as well Slater turning away robbed by the ball and Zelic came across quickly but it's an Iranian throw on the far side and just an interesting thing to note is we were trying before the game to find out when the last time it was that Iran lost here at the Azadi Stadium but it was such a long time ago that no one could tell us they have such a phenomenal home record even ardent followers of Iranian football were at a loss to answer that question as Bosnich comes out so quickly off his line Zelic Tony Vidmar Zelic on the ball but robbed very quickly indeed by a sharp tackle and an equally nippy challenge came in from Alex Tobin the Australian captain Moore Slater still Slater great play from him Zelic coming onto the ball but he was so intent on winning the ball that he couldn't keep the ball if you like and it's run away for an Iranian goal kick but certainly Johnny Warren we've had almost 14 minutes gone here and from our commentary position right <laughs> next to the pitch which in itself is uh, a unique thing in football we have started well on the card table as they say no it's been a terrific start Australia very composed the danger period for them is the first 20 minutes and so far so good Iran really buzzing they know they've got to get the result this match but this is a danger man for them Shadabi deep cross to the back post Ali Doiz there but he couldn't out jump Craig Moore and that is a cross that went right into Ali Doiz territory he thrives on the ball to the back post as we saw against Japan six days ago now this is interesting Abedzade we know likes to tease the strikers if he can Tony Vidmar has time still Tony Vidmar forward to his brother Aurelio White on the left hand side potential here for Australia but no one's backing up Aurelio Vidmar and he's just 
pushed off the ball there by two tacklers. And one of the benefits of being so close to the action is that we can hear everything that comes out of the mouth of the Australian coach Terry Venables. He has been up on his feet on several occasions already in this first half, yelling to his players. High ball, too high for Goodmark. Tobin comes across. Didn't risk anything too tricky there by trying to perhaps push the ball back down the line. He was prepared to just concede the throw. Estilli, this clever midfield player. And down goes Sadavi. Sadavi. Brought into the side today. As we take a look at Sadavi here, taking on Tony Vidmar, late challenge. But he has already shown his class, Sadavi, in this opening quarter of an hour or so. Tony Vidmar prepared preferred at left back to Stan Lazaridis because of the pace of Matavikia who is expected to play down the right hand flank Lazaridis had a groin strain he has recovered from it but only just so he's on the bench tonight Kuehl getting the nod over Graham Arnold and Jolo Aloisi up front and perhaps a surprise Australia is Horvath in a sweeper, but it's Iran on the attack here on the edge of the penalty area. The shot comes in. Well, Bosnich didn't appear to move across his line, which gives an indication perhaps of just how close the shot was. But Sharudi was well prepared to chance his arm here. First time with the shot, it was cleanly struck, but well away from Bosnich's left hand post. And again, the trouble there, Paul, coming from Azizi, uh, the Asian player of the year. He has but has been in, in fine touch, but signs are today he's back to his best. Very dangerous. Uh, he does invite the foul. Australia have to be very, very careful. He's playing more through the middle than normally. He normally plays wider on the left. And he's the danger man for Australia at the moment. So take another look at the shot from Foster. Shoot on site policy for the Socceroos today, without a doubt, and its local time is 10 to 4 in the afternoon. A perfect day for football. Cool and crisp, about 17 degrees here in Tehran. Azizi, handball. Play goes on. Azizi again, who looks. A very tricky customer indeed, but the ball's been stolen by Australia and Kuehl just tried to help it onto Viduka, but they were just too close to each other. Well, 31 out of 32 places for France, 98 have been sorted out. There is one place left. It will be filled by Iran or Australia. This is World Cup football at its very best. Steve Horvath takes the free kick. That's Valdir Vieira, known as Badu. It's a chance here for Kewal. A goal for Australia. A brilliant start for the Socceroos. And it's Harry Kewal, the 19-year-old, who has opened the scoring. And the silence that 130,000 people can make is quite stunning here. As equally as stunning as the finish by Harry Kewal. As we take another look here, Kuehl beat the offside trap, one touch and a control and a clear volley past the goalkeeper. A superb strike, and that's his first ever goal for the Socceroos. Venables took a risk in many people's eyes, not going for a more experienced striker, but the risk has paid off in the most emphatic of fashions here. Well, Tony Vidmar is yellow carded well what a start from Australia after 19 minutes Harry Kuehl has broken through the Iranian defense there was 
talk a week ago, John, that Iran's defence was looking shaky at times, and it certainly has and been the found case. And found the hole beautifully, didn't they? And uh, as you say, a justification. Uh, we've been speculating for months and months who is going to play in front for Australia. Young Kuehl at that stage wasn't a, a prospect. We more regarded him as a, an attacking left fullback. He now, of course, with Leeds playing in front, and that's a great start for Australia. The pressure really now on Iran. Uh, playing at home, this crowd is all for them, of course, but as things start to turn against them, they also will turn on the team. But Australia uh, playing very composed. Uh, they've weathered the storm. They've got their noses in front, and the pressure now really and truly on Iran. That's an Australian throw just inside the Australian half and the comments prior to the game was can Australia survive the first 20 minutes? Well, the answer is clear. We've had 21 minutes gone here at the Azadi Stadium. And not only are they surviving, but they are calling the shots here. As the ball goes back, it's an awkward one. Paravani wasn't prepared to go back to his goalkeeper. Later, we'll take the throw in. And Iran have lost three out of their last four games. Five weeks ago, they were the indisputed, outstanding team in Asia. As Vidmar tries to apply some pressure to Abadzadeh, they were clearly head and shoulders above most of the other nations. Perhaps South Korea would be the only exception to that in the Asian region. But things have just gone so horribly wrong for them. That's well won there, but an awkward ball for Moore, who takes it on the volley. Hasn't tried to do anything too tricky with an awkward bouncing ball. Coming into the game, Australia already have some casualties. Paul Ocon's knee has flared up again. It's a real shame for the Lazio midfielder, regarded as the outstanding Australian player. Paul Trimboli had a bad tackle during the week. He wasn't available for today's game he's pinched his medial ligaments Stan Lazaridis' groin has healed but he is just on the bench tonight and Mark Maduka came into the game with a throat infection as well Azizi little ball to feet Danger here that's a great turn there by Monsurian over the top of Moore Ali Dayi was being held but not according to the referee who's given the decision to Australia. The experienced Italian referee. Moore tangling with Ali Dayi. And so far, John, the Craig Moore against Ali Dayi scenario, I guess, is, is working well, despite the obvious uh, lack of logic behind it, if you like. Well, uh, there is a reason uh, behind it. I'm uh, not aware of it. But I, I just, my doubt is more on... Azizi, Azizi with uh, Tobin. He's very, uh, very quick, very tricky, uh, but uh, it's working well so far, so we can't uh, go against that move. It's a little bit controversial, but so far so good for Australia. They just need, I know it's easy sitting here saying, they just need just to use the ball a little bit more out of midfield. I think we're losing it too much, but it's, uh, we cannot be critical so far. It's a dream start for Australia some uh, 25 minutes into the first half a goal in front well the caption on your screen there was slightly askew it's mark viduka not mark vidmar as kuehl turns into the penalty area but he's robbed of the ball monsurian waiting for some movement but there isn't a lot coming and alex tobin easily steals in front of the stationary Azizi, Zelic helps the ball forward. Foster continuing the run forward. The loose ball comes for Viduka. Great play from Mark Viduka to steal the ball away, but a strong challenge was equally as good. And Ali Dayi is peeling away to the left. He's got more to beat. Horvath is in close attendance as well, but Moore is watching across the goal, and Alex Tobin was there at the right place to just get a foot to the ball. Ali Dayi is a player 
this is capable of doing it all on his own if he has to short corner to Iran blocked here and a chance for Aurelio Vidmar to clear the ball waiting for some movement it comes from Viduka who's very much up on his own at the moment Zelic turning inside no one behind him if he wanted to go back so he was forced to just play it safe down the line and Iran have played 15 World Cup qualifying games so far in this campaign compared to just six for Australia somewhat of a role reversal if you like for the Socceroos who in past campaigns have had to trek to all four corners of the world to try and qualify Vidmar lost out Azizi just keeping the ball in danger here for Australia Azizi playing across to the near post Ali Doye Bosnich Sonic, brilliant save from Mark Bosnich what a wonderful piece of reflexes from the Socceroo goalkeeper the crowd went up expecting a goal but it wasn't to be and it's a free kick to Australia on the edge of the penalty area what a great save from Bosnich Azizi the troublemaker again and Ali Dair showing why he's right at the top striker in Asia look at this shot that is a great save from Bosnich slow down Maduka getting a touch in, but he was outnumbered there by an Iran side that has lifted somewhat by the attempt from Ali Dayi. Medavikia, this lightning fast right winger. That's clearly a foul on Foster, but play goes on. Foster looks to the referee as if to say, what does he need to do to get a free kick? But Tobin is fouled there, and this time the Socceroos get the free kick that they deserve Madovicia the number two was surprisingly picked as a right-sided attacker last week against Japan and many people expected him to drop back to his normal position of right fullback but he's stuck with the same forward line the three up front held Vieira, the coach here as Viduka finds a space for himself but the ball just didn't quite run for him and the goalkeeper with a spectacular clearance and Australia go all the way back to Moore Moore's fouled <laughs> Ali Dai just tripping his man Horvath to a free kick, selected ahead of Milan Ivanovic for today's game in the surprise selection, I guess, of the match from an Australian perspective. Anyway, Horvath, who has been trying to get to play in England with West Ham, but he returned back to his club in Croatia, Hayek Split, and has been playing there. Ali Doyi. Free kick, no, a throw into Iran. And John, there was a lot of concern coming into the game about so many of the Socceroos were underdone or hadn't been playing a lot of club football, if you like, but it doesn't seem to have had any effect at all, really. No, on the other hand, this is the one game they've been looking forward to for months. It is a real uh, baptism for them, a real game, probably the first time we've seen them under so much pressure. And no offside there, Australia nearly caught out. But uh, Marta Vicchia, you're talking about before, I still believe he's a much more effective player coming from deep. The reason they're playing him up front is that uh, Bagheri, their top player, is out suspended for this match. And as a result, there's not enough support in front for Ali Dair and Azizi. But uh, Marta Vicchia, for me, much more effective coming from deep. But uh, that's where Iran are playing him today up front. And I think it's suiting Australia that he's playing in that role call from the soccer bench is to push up 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 when Iran tried to play out like that and very quickly the Iranians were closed down by yellow shirts that are 
hungry for a place in France next year. Yeah, the pressuring of uh, Iran in their own half is excellent by Australia. I'm sure Iran not used to that type of tactic from uh, other Asian opponents, but Australia playing the pressing game in the Iran half very, very effectively, not giving them time to build, putting them under pressure all the time. Yeah. Tobin, first to the ball. Aurelio Vidmar. Kuehl with time to turn, somewhat surprisingly, and that's a fine ball inside to Foster, who gets past one, goes past a second. Yeah. Tony Vidmar. Yeah. Foul on Tony Vidmar by Mardavikia. Iran have made the World Cup finals once back in 1978, four years after Australia's only appearance in the finals of the World Cup. Zelic forward, skips past a couple, Kuehl. Wasn't really expecting the ball there. And now Iran on the counter-attack down the right-hand side. Azizi, clever bit of skill to get past Kuehl over the head of Ali Doyi. And Slater has time at the far post. And Ali Doyi is down on the edge of the penalty area. Well, he's slowly starting to look like he's getting back to his feet, but he's technically in an offside position, which is good for the Socceroos. But it's a free kick on the far side there, and it's gone to Australia. Ali Dayi back on his feet, but Australia back on the attack. Slater will take the free kick. Paduka at the far post is the obvious target. Kuehl making his presence felt in there as well. Kuehl trying to win the ball in the air, but he's... The tallest players, Harry Kuehl. Tobin, clearly too good in the air for Azizi. Aurelia Vidmar over his head. The ball's gone through Viduka's offside. Well, just for half a second there, it looked like Viduka had beaten the offside trap as we see that Kuehl is just feeling his back of his head after going for that last cross. Two and a half minutes gone here at the Azadi Stadium. And Surian, oh, well won there by Tobin. But the flag's gone up for offside, but it, Tobin wasn't to know that. And he just got his foot in there to cut out that clever little through ball. Iran nil, Australia one. The first of two matches which will decide who will qualify for France in 1998. Little touch back from Aurelio Vidmar to his brother Tony. The, the two instructions from the bench, Paul, one is for Kuehl to drop a little bit into, into midfield and they're concerned with Tony Vidmar already on a yellow just to take it easy with the tackling, just not to commit another foul. They fear that he could get uh, the second yellow and of course be sent off. Well, the goal from Harry Kuehl has stunned the home supporters here the best possible beginning for Australia to take the sting out of the crowd the factor of 130,000 cannot be ignored and Iran just taking their time to get forward now free on the right hand side is Peshat Zadeh Ali Doyi, given a little bit of room. Tackle went in, lunge from Tobin. Azizi with the shot deflection. Bosnic was in the right place originally, but he did move to one side and the ball came back into his body, which was good news for him, of course. Now Iran on the attack again as we watch Azizi on the replay. Shot went straight at Bosnic there and you didn't miss anything in the live action, but still Iran pressing for an equaliser. Sadavi on the right hand side. Ali Doyi beat the air by Moore. Medavikia allowed to shoot! That's again over the bar! Well, just for a moment there, Bosnich lost the ball. 
and it bounced on top of the Australian crossbar. But too much room given here to the danger man, Mata Vickia. What a good shot it was. It was clearly going in. Bosnich thrust up an arm and just did enough to keep the ball out. Australia still repelling everything that Iran have thrown at them so far. Less than 10 minutes to go before halftime. Corner to Iran. Loose ball, Azizi, little back heel. Shot comes in, but there were yellow shirts. Ten of them, in fact, to get through, and the flag goes up for offside. Bosnia's tips the ball over, but it would have... Catch your breath, mate. Eh? Ah, what a period. I mean, that's the sort of pressure. Full marks for Australia. They've, they've uh, just kept them out. Bosnich, another great save. And uh, just a foot uh, here. But look at Azizi here. That's uh, classy stuff. A great shot. Thankfully, we got a, a block to it and able to survive another period of Iranian pressure. Zelic. Australia looking to spend a little bit more time in Iran's half than they have done in the last 10 minutes or so. It's getting harder and harder for them. Tony Vidmar facing his own goal. Tony Vidmar talking to the bench, the bench talking to Vidmar. The instructions were to stay wide all the time. He's saying it's not as easy as it looks. The Duke have fouled. Well, Mark Viduka and Harry Kuehl, as a combination, have had just half a game together. That was against Tunisia in early October. But already they're starting to look like a combination that could go places for Australia. Vidmar with the free kick, curled in with the left foot. No one at the far post for Australia. Ball given away. Viduka bringing it down. Well, Ali Dayi, the ball fell perfectly to him. Zelic bundled off the ball. Foster forward, Slater's offside. Australia have faced Iran five times overall. They have been beaten on three occasions. They have beaten Iran twice significantly in the all-conquering 1974 World Cup campaign. They played Iran and the flag goes up for offside and that's a crazy decision. And the ball's gone into the back of the net which will infuriate the supporters even more but the run there from Sadavi was clearly onside. Clearly onside and uh, one must say the decisions going Australia's way. Uh, the referee uh, not favouring Australia, but it's been for a, for a home team. I seldom see so many decisions going against them. That run is from deep. There is no way he's offside at all. And uh, Iran, unfortunate on that uh, occasion. Seven minutes, uh, Paul, to half time. Important Australia hold it the way it is and go in one up, be able to regroup. Foster trying the shot. And the pressure will be uh, really on Iran should they be down 1 0 at half time. But. Uh, you just sense uh, this last seven, eight minutes is going to be Iran's period. They've got to peg it back. And one must say they really do miss uh, Bagheri out of midfield. Their main goal scorer is out suspended, comes back for next week's match in Melbourne. Maybe too late then. They do miss him coming from deep. Iran getting on with the game very quickly indeed. Akpur. Sadavi through the legs of Vidmar to Hockpur again. It's an awkward ball into the penalty area. This is out. Horvat <laughs> solid with the clearance. And the ball is back in play awfully quickly. The flag stays down. Made a Vicky pulling it across. And it noise 
just coming through the effects microphones around the ground. I'm sure we'll be telling the story here. It is absolutely deafening because Azizi has found an equaliser for Iran. It was half a chance at best, but he managed to just deflect the ball past Bosnich. No one picking up the diminutive striker at the near post. Bosnitz left exposed there. And it's 1-1. But Australia have a free kick. We've got around four minutes to go before the break. Zelic now for the Socceroos. The ball straight two to Abadzade. Quick ball from him. Long ball. Awkward here. Bosnitz is coming out all the way. Well, exactly what we didn't want, and Amanda uh, Madavikia, so dangerous on the right, the cross and the touch from Azizi, and uh, five to go to half time. Iran just flying now. This, this is a danger man, Azizi. Well, such a vital period of the game now for Australia. Three and a half minutes to go until half time. Foster down the line and offside. Well, six days ago, Iran went a goal down against Japan, but they came back strongly. They have the character as Ali Dai turns and sneaks away. Zelic got there well and won the ball superbly there. Ned Zelic, and he was. Fouled in the end by Ali Dai. Well, a missed kick there by Foster. It's found Ali Dai, but pass to Azizi won't even attempt to try and reach. An astonishing feeling standing in the center of the Azadi Stadium. There are laws here. There are no women in the stadium. It's a 100% male crowd. The female of the population aren't allowed to attend sporting matches of this nature. The noise is really quite stunning. And the way the Socceroos have played in this first half has been equally as impressive but there's more work to do yet Ali Doye Horvath behind him corner to Iran a real danger period for Australia here the short one taken only one defender out there Sadavi whipping it across the Duca sliding in and that came off Ali Doye so it'll be a goal kick though there were 125,000 people standing up out of their seats as the shot came in here as we take another look played across by Sadavi Viduka virtually passed the ball straight to Akpur on the edge of the penalty area but the shot went wide Slater well he's got an arm around his neck surely that is a foul and it finally comes so I'm sure a lot of the players are having trouble hearing the referee's whistle at times as Zelic sprays a pass wide to Vidmar. The flag's gone up, the ball's gone out, but... We've been talking for a long time, Paul, how good Iran are. People told, uh, doubted it at home or what it's like to play in this atmosphere. Remembering their top player is out and we've had two great saves from Bosnich and... Uh, I think the best thing at the moment is that we're going, or hopefully going in at 1-1 at half time. We'll give Venables time to sort a few uh, things out, uh, which are needed for Australia to try and get control of this match. Well, that's a clever ball from Tony Vidmar to Aurelio Vidmar and Kuhl. Well, in Hockpour and Kuhl here. Now, what will the referee make of this? He's calling both players to him. 
yellow card to Hokpo and yellow card to Harry Kuehl as well. We're now 30 seconds into time added on here. Free kick must be taken again. So it's Kuehl and Tony Vidmar from Australia on yellow cards. And Mohamed Hokboa, the only recipient from Iran. Socceroos would welcome the halftime whistle given the onslaught that they've faced in the last 15 to 20 minutes or so. Offside. Well, the halftime whistle has gone. Players struggling to hear the whistle with the volume here at the Azadi Stadium. But the news so far for the Socceroos is that they've made a very good beginning here. Harry Kuehl opened the scoring after 19 minutes when they really did slice open the Iranian defence. But since then, Iran have piled on the pressure here against the Socceroos and significantly two outstanding saves from the goalkeeper, Mark Bosnich has kept the Iranian side down to one goal. They did score from Azizi six minutes before the break. The pressure finally told here. But so far, the Socceroos are holding out well under extreme circumstances. Half-time at the Azadi. It's Iran 1, Australia 1. And welcome back to the World Game and Judgment Day number one on Australia's last step to the World Cup Finals. It's half-time in Tehran with the score 1-1 between the two sides. A reminder again that the Aussies will have their rematch against Iran at the MCG next Saturday evening with a live telecast in all viewing areas except Melbourne on SBS. Telecast times uh, we'll tell you about uh, a little bit later. Please check your local guides for details. They are varying telecast times because of uh, the various time zones, of course. Remember, no live coverage in Melbourne unless the game is a sellout. Well, let's look back on that uh, first half with the panellists. A furious half, Charlie. The away goal of crucial value to Australia, but uh, we're, we're in a bit of bother at the moment. Most certainly. I would have preferred it to be the other way around, actually, with the Australians not starting off as good as they did to score the goal, and it would have been better if they came into the second half. As we see here, Ned Zalich not uh, missing by too far on a free kick early on that was in the first couple of minutes and again great ball by Foster uh, Alex over to Foster great cross and I thought Mark Paduka should have done a little bit better so we started putting a lot of pressure early on and then Iran started to um, get back into the game we saw uh, Azizi starting to cause a lot of havoc and here a shot just going wide surely Mark Bosley should the form that he's been in is uh, he would have probably saved that uh, but again, early on, Australia seemed to be in a commanding situation, and what a great goal. We didn't see early on what actually happened, but it was a long ball over the top. The defender misjudged it. Harry Kuehl, what a great start for him, and a magnificent control and a goal. And here we see one of the first saves of Bosnich. A great ball in, and Al Daya, what a great strike. And Bosnich going down, quite clearly, a magnificent save. Rally, how did you see the half? I see that uh, as soon as uh, Australia took the lead, Iran concentrated on attacking from the right side, causing a lot of problems, especially as soon as uh, Vidma received yellow card. I think he's in a lot of bother. And all attacks from Iran, this is what brought Iran into the game, just analyzed that everything is happening on the right-hand side. It's a very difficult coaching point to take Vidma off and introduce new defensive, defensive player or keep him over there with a great deal of risk. I think Iranians will attack all the way on, uh, on uh, Vidmar's side if he continues being on the field. Right. 
Uh, I'm surprised uh, Terry's not pushing more down the line. I, I'm a bit disappointed in Robbie. Robbie's, Robbie Slater's staying well back at the moment, and I'm thinking he's, he's giving the initiative to the Iranians to come forward. Now, uh, that incident just before with the with the offside goal, so we thought offside goal. I, I believe the linesman signalled for a foul prior to the fellow making the run, so I don't think it, the decision was as critical as, as it appeared. Charlie, Charlie, the goal we conceded? Yeah, well, it was uh, unfortunate, but again, the Iran's really picked up the pace. We saw right up until the, to the death of it, and here even Mark Viduka, you know, way back in his 18-yard box defending. So the pressure that they're applying is enormous. You've got players like Maktavikia, who's really applying himself, Azizi, creating a lot of opportunities, and there's Kukpa right from the... The defender right up there trying to score so there is a lot of pressure that they're applying they're, they know that they have to go and actually create a result here they can't just uh, sit back and, and they're going to put a lot of pressure on the Australians all right gentlemen well, we've heard from our studio guests let's uh, cross over now to Carl Patterson and Johnny Warren for their summation of the first half in Tehran thanks Les and welcome to everyone right around Australia to the Azadi Stadium here in Tehran joining me Johnny Warren you've been calling the first half Johnny at 38 minutes, we thought the Australians had just about done the perfect job here in Tehran. It all changed with that goal. It did, and uh, I, I think overall it's been a fair result on the, on, the, on the first half. Perhaps Iran slightly better, which is not surprising. But I felt if Australia could get in, a few things perhaps could be sorted out because it's, it's not working exactly as Venables would want. But, I mean, that's easy, easier to say. But to be out there, this atmosphere, Iran are playing uh, uh, for national pride. I mean, they, they're a team that... I haven't been in good form, so uh, you've got to imagine what they're like when they are in good form. But they're throwing everything. Thankfully, Bagheri is not there because his uh, additional push out of midfield would create a lot of problems for us. I think uh, there probably have to be a few adjustments at half-time. There are the, the role of Slater, for example. We haven't seen a lot of uh, Robbie, uh, Tony Vidmar in a little bit of trouble on the left and, and so on. So hopefully they'll be sorted out. We know Iran are a team of fighters. They were down 2-0 in their first game against uh, China and came back to win 4-2. So being behind will mean nothing to them. In fact, one comment was made that they only start playing real football when they went behind in this game. Well, they are. If for nothing else, they're fighters. At their best, they are the best team in Asia. We've been saying that for a long, long time. They've had a, a downer recently, all sorts of problems. But at their worst, they are fighters. But uh, their form today, uh, they will put us under enormous pressure. Thanks to Mark Bosnich. I mean, what two... The first save was just uh, absolute uh, fantastic, as in, in fact was the second. But uh, we're still 1-1. One, one. Uh, Venables has them in at half-time, settle things down, perhaps a few adjustments and come out to face what's going to be a very long 45 minutes for us. OK, Johnny Wine, you're probably having flashbacks to the atmosphere oh, of 73. Yeah, yeah, very much so. It's uh, very, very much, much a, so. a daunting atmosphere here. Good luck in the second half to the Australians. We hope we'll now cross back to Les Murray in Sydney. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Johnny. And uh, indeed, they're going to be 45 very, very long minutes in that second half. Let's take a short break, and when we return, we'll preview the action in the second half. And welcome back to the big one in Tehran between Australia and Iran. It's 1-1 at the break. We're a couple of minutes away from uh, the kickoff to the second half. Rally Rasic, if you were in Venable's shoes, this is the predictable question. What would you be doing? There is obviously something that needs fixing because they go, they're going to be coming at Australia with uh, all wheels on in this second 45 minutes. I think it's a great risk uh, to play defensively at the moment. And uh, secondly, as I indicated before, yellow card on Vidma is a critical point in, in, in this coming 45 minutes. And all attack of Iran, was it plain or not, has come from right side. And then on the other hand, if you allow Dai to play the way that he was playing, uh, something will come. And so if, in my view, from the coaching point of view, I would just do what Terry did in ten, first 10, 15 minutes, attack and force errors as we did. And uh, that, that would be decided. Quick prediction, Ray, can we survive it? I think so. I think Terry's got to take the initiative back, though. He's given the initiative to the Iranians by dropping the players back, and I presume it's Terry's uh, direction. So I I'd like to see us push more forward again and try to hold the ball up a little bit more in up front. Same question to you, Charlie. Yeah, I think the midfield, we've got to get in into um, more control there, and we've got to have Mark Viduka and Harry Kill uh, forward, much more forward, rather than sitting back, because it's a, it's a long way to try to get forward when we lose possession. 
All right, Charlie, thanks very much. Let's go back to our commentators, Paul Williams and Johnny Warren. Welcome back to the Azadi Stadium for the start of the second half. There have been no changes to the starting 11 of Australia, but all five substitutes were warming up at the break. Terry Venables has been in charge of the Socceroos since early January. They've played 12 matches and they have a 100% success record with 12 wins. But this is by far the sternest test so far as we take another look at the goal that beat Bosnich in the first half. Azizi at the near post. And the second half is clearly underway. Craig Moore again on Ali Doi with a wild shot at the Australian goal. He's been well contained in the first half by Craig Moore. And the danger before the game on talking to the Australian coaching staff, they were worried about Ali Doi, of course, but Azizi and Medovicia were the two other players who they were particularly concerned about and both combined for Iran's equaliser. Moore, again, backpedalling. Ali Doi lets the ball run out, throw in to Iran. Reza Sharudi with the throw. Foster up against Mansourian. Corner to Iran. Taken quickly. Sharudi whipping it across. Ali Doi and Bosnich. Brilliant save again from Mark Bosnich. Ali Doi rose above everybody in the Australian defence. A marvellous effort from him. But it was matched every centimetre of the way by Bosnitz. What a save that was. Corner to Iran. Foster hacks the ball away. As we take another look here. Ali Doye, look, just hangs in the air. Look, hangs so far above the Australian defence. And the third great save from Bosnitz. Well, we talked about the first 20 minutes of the first half, John, but this is equally as important. This more important, here. more important. Hockport plays the ball in, away by Horvat. Baduka's in space, but the whistle's gone. Just Z from the coaching staff at half-time, more of the same from Australia. No changes, of course. They are concerned about uh, the yellow cards. They... Uh, really uh, don't want any silly fouls given away because of the suspension that happened in, in uh, Melbourne. But a difficult time for Australia. Iran are just going to throw everything at them now. They know they've got to get the result in this match. And Ali Dair in the air, as we've seen just moments ago, is going to be a real danger for us in the second half. Foul on Slater. Throw taken quickly but will have to be taken again by Robbie Slater because he took the throw on the running track. Zelic just lost the ball for a moment. Coming inside, still Zelic. Goes past two or three. This is the brilliance of Zelic. The ball to the back post, deep port. Aurelia Vidmar's there, nodding it back. Chance for Australia. Tony Vidmar coming in with the shot. And a tremendous move that from the Socceroos with Zelic at the heart of it. They're going past a couple of midfielders like they didn't exist. It was a ball to the far post, picking out Aurelia Vidmar, that understanding that the two have. And the shot was deflected away there from Tony Vidmar. Corner to Australia. Vaduka, the obvious target. Abadzada underneath it, Vaduka there as well, but a good save for the goalkeeper. And Azizi is away down the right-hand side. Danger here for Australia. Paul Barnes. Kept his eye on the ball all the way, Steve Horvath. Kuehl, great turn from him. Little ball inside, Vidmar fouled. Well, the edge to the game has been unrelenting right from the, right from the word go. And three warming up uh, behind us, Paul, uh, Ernie Tapai, Graham Arnold and uh, Skoko, so, and Lazaridi. So a change within the next 10 minutes or so for Australia. Moore getting first to the ball, but putting his defence under pressure. Well, this has been interesting. Tobin 
will surely get a yellow. And he does. But the relief really is that it's not a red card. Well, there could be an argument for a red. Was he the last man? The replay will show it looked horribly close to being the last man, in which case Australia are a little fortunate not to uh, have a send-off. Free kick to Iran. Sharudi over the ball. Everyone back for Australia. The onslaught from the home side continues. Well, it went into the wall. And the referee has given a corner to Iran. Bosnich willing to come off his line. Alex Tobin, I think, will be happy with the yellow card there. But any mistake in the defence can cause all kinds of problems. With the cross, Bosnich plucked it out of the air. Keeping his eye on the ball the whole time. And what an important role he has played in goal for the Socceroos tonight. Not just because of the outstanding saves he's made, but more so the confidence that he gives his fellow defenders. The Duca with the layoff. Kuehl, this is promising for the Socceroos. Down the left-hand side, Tony Budma, Dick Cross, too deep. In fact, but Slater will get there. A good move from Australia, though. Slater whipping the ball in. Good cross from Robbie Slater. But there were players waiting in the centre there. And cross just a little overhit by Tony Vidma as Foster comes. Zelic. Well, tried to just bunt it through the gap there in defence. And Iran on the attack here with the dangerous Matavikia. And here's the even more dangerous Ali Doi. Moors against him. Bosnitz went down. Well, the stadium here just lifts incredibly when this man gets the ball. It is quite hard to describe, but you can see behind the goal the crowd going up on their feet. No power in the shot, though. And here's Kuhl. Great first-time ball. Aurelio Vidmar just pushed off the ball for a second there. Aurelio Vidmar, seven goals in his last ten games for Australia. Well, now the Socceroos on the counter-attack. Baduka, the keeper's a mile off his line if Baduka can see him, but he's been tripped on the edge of the penalty area. Great steal there from Australia. Baduka just had a chance to get his head up there, but he was fouled badly. And his foot stomped there. Well, it's a free kick around 22 metres out as we take a look at Australia's substitutes warming up. Arnold and Skoko. And it's going to be Lazaridis will be one of the changes. Terry Venables talking to him uh, as we speak. I think they're looking for a lot more out of uh, in an attacking situation down the left. We saw Tony Vidmar get forward for the first time just minutes ago. And to relieve the pressure, you need that outlet. Well, Tony Vidmar is the obvious player to come off if Lazaridis does come on. It's attack here from Iran. Mansourian, the bounce of the ball worked against him. Slater should get there, and he does, and it was fortunate for Australia there because they were caught very much on the hop by the pace of Iran down the left-hand side. You see a great crowd shot there. Very much the sport of the people football here. 12 million people in Tehran. Moore miscontrolled it. Dangerous. Ali Doye. Assisi. Horvats. More than happy just to stick a foot to the ball and clear it up the field. But more pressure for Australia to sustain with Sadavi. He's gone down and it has been fouled. Well, it's Tony Vidmar as well. Wow. So your heart's in your mouth about the second yellow card for him. Well, 
I must say the, the decisions have gone our way. I mean, that uh, is almost a second yellow. Thankfully not. But Australia have really got to try to use the ball when they get possession of it. Otherwise, we're just going to be under sustained pressure all the time. I know that's easier said than done. But it is time to try to play the ball out if possible because uh, otherwise Iran, it's just going to be back to the wall stuff for the next 30 odd minutes. Well, on two or three occasions in the match, Australia have stolen possession in a very dangerous position. They just haven't quite been able to take advantage of that as more instructions come to Ned Zelich from the Australian bench. Azaridis is now stripped and ready for action. Deep ball to back post. Vidmar across, straight at the goal. Well won in the air by Aurelia Vidmar. The Zelich vidmar combination again to the fore. Tony Vidmar up against Madavikia. Throw in to Iran. We've had just on 11 minutes of the second half gone. And Ernie Tapai is about to come on for the Socceroos as well. So Tapai and Lazaridis will be in the match any second now. And two good changes, Paul. I think uh, Tony Vidmar with the, already with the yellow. I think we do need more down the left side. And Tapai, the super sub, can add, we, ha, add uh, penetration on the other flank. It's something we've lacked in the game so far. And uh, two good changes coming up for Australia. It's Iran 1, Australia 1. Australia having a little bit of trouble getting the substitution happening. A few technicalities. Kuehl is offside. And it's a free kick to the home team. Well, the Solomon Islands and Tahiti and New Zealand have all been swept aside by the Socceroo side. Intent on qualifying for the World Cup for just the second time. Iran are significantly stronger. It's a corner. Sharuzi will take the corner. Still, Australia unable to make the substitution. Danger there for the Socceroos. Kuehl hooks it away. It's gone right down to the Iranian keeper, Abadzada, who fancies himself a little bit as an outfield player. And a long ball from him, straight to the head of Tobin, who gives it away. Long shot! Plenty of power there from Sharuni, who's come into the side today in midfield. But it didn't really trouble Mark Bosnich, and hopefully now Australia can make the changes. Aurelio Vidmar, Aurelio Vidmar is coming off. And Robbie Slater is making way as well. We'll just see the readjustment here. And the question is, Johnny Warren, will Stan Lazaridis go to left wing back and push his brother forward, or will they just uh, be a straight swap? Well, it's a good question. Uh, I mean, uh, Tony is coming to the right side. And stand over on the left. Tapai is going to play more in an advanced position on the left. In other words, to take over Aurelio Vidmar's position. Lazaridis into things very quickly indeed. The drawing problem for Stan Lazaridis really kept him out of the starting 11, if you like. The fact that he hasn't played a game for three weeks was the clinching thing for Terry Bentley to start Tony Vidmar in that position as Tapai comes across. It's a good dig. Cross Bostic on his line. Tony Vidmar winning the ball. Mansurian now for Iran. Going all the way back. Kuehl can't get there. Tried to get the steal. Still around forward. Estili. The flag's up for offside. Fourteen and a half minutes gone here at the Azadi. Iran won. Australia won. Speaking to Terry Venables during the week, he said that he would be absolutely delighted to come away with the draw. 
Tapai early, Kuehl can't get there. Exane, long throw, very good throw from the experienced goalkeeper. Horvath composed, Zelic touching it on, Foster was sold a little bit short by the pass there from Ned Zelic, but he's helped up by Estili, who had some real sting in the tackle there. Foster limping forward. Zelic again. Well, that was given away just a little bit too easily when Australia need to work as much of the clock down as they can by maintaining possession but Tapai's in the thick of things quickly he has got such a reputation as coming on as a substitute for Australia it's easy teasing Tobin Tobin well he is an immaculate defender didn't foul his man there and won the ball for Australia in the end as well Danger here. Bosnich on the edge of his area, though. As the foot race between Ali Dai and Craig Moore was eventuated. Another change coming up too, Paul. Jo uh, Skoko will be on. There'll be a change in midfield. They always say the sign of the uh, disturbed uh, on the bench is uh, the team making the most changes, and this will be the third for Australia. They're, they're not happy for a lot of reasons, and again, it's easy said than done that uh, Iran are putting us up under so much pressure. It is necessary for us to start to try to put a few passes together to deny them possession. At the moment, uh, once we're getting it, we're giving it straight back. And hence the continual pressure, which uh, we're not going to sit, be able to, to sustain that for the next 30 minutes. Shiruzi for Iran onto that favoured left foot of his. Looked across to the near post. Ali Dai slips. Goal kick to Australia. Well, he is a brilliant striker. There's no doubt about it, but he has been well contained tonight by an Australian side that has been extremely well briefed on his quality. Brings the ball down. Need to get there quickly. Nice ball from him to Horvath. Somewhat spoons it up the centre to Viduka. Moore, first to the ball. Tony Vidmar, who's now switched to the right hand side. Kuehl. Well, it is very hard to retain possession, such as the pressure of the occasion as well as the pressure from the Iranian players. Tapai, Maduka offside. Well, one of the benefits of a commentary position this close to the ground is you do get a very good look at the offside decisions. Tobin, forced to go out against the danger map. Madavikia, Azizi on the edge of the penalty area. Azizi, Madavikia. Good move from Iran. Australia very much on their toes in defence. Alex Tobin, the captain, marshalling everyone to the single cause of keeping Iran at bay. Still plenty of work to do. Corner to Iran. Kuehl just helping it down the park very quickly indeed. Tapai, this willing chaser. Iran about to make a change. That's Mansourian who's coming off. And it's Tahami who is coming on in place of Mansourian. Iran 
can't take the free kick quickly. Laid square. Lots of yellow shirts behind the ball. Ali Doyic is trying to help it on. Act clear, but just a little bit unconvincingly from Australia. Foster got there. Linesman's flag is directly up in the air. Which doesn't tell the referee which way to make the decision as we take a look at Vieira, the coach of Iran. His nickname is Badu. He's Brazilian, but he left Brazil when he was just 18, so he doesn't have a big reputation in his own country. He's the first foreign coach in Iran since 1979 at the start of the Islamic Revolution. Bosnich is there. What a game he's had. Kuehl, the lone striker at the moment, as Hockpour brings down an awkward ball very easily indeed. Zelic can't win it. Tapai in quickly. Well, we are in the 22nd minute of the second half. Well, danger now for Australia. Steve Horvath is limping badly. Kuehl prepared to take on the goalkeeper, but Abizada showed his confidence and his class and his nerve as well, more so than anything else. What a thing to try in this cauldron here. The ball goes back to Bosnich, who's solid. The ball on the ground. Lazaridis, Zelic's time, Viduka peeling away to the right, he's been pulled back Viduka and he's been fouled. But play goes on because Australia had possession, Foster down the right hand side, still Foster, time for him to get a good cross in. Whip to the near post, awkward for the goalkeeper but no one there for Australia. And now Lazaridis in possession, good little spell of the game this for Australia, helped on again to Lazaridis. A throw into Australia on the far side. And the first real genuine moments in attack for the Socceroos in what seems like an awfully long time. Robert Zada, who was criticised last week against Japan for his histrionics it was something that Australia felt that they could capitalise on as Tapai takes the corner Abadzada out again he's dropped it well he's plucked it off the nose of Mark Viduka but the free kick has gone in favour of Iran the challenge by Viduka said to be illegal Karabani Tony Vidmar in tight but the ball helped on quickly to Moore who's Equally as tight on his man. Zelic helping it on. Kuehl bringing it down beautifully. Through for Viduka. He's offside. Well, that was close. Well, Venables is up on his feet. And furious with that decision. 100% right. That uh, was not offside. Evens up the one of the first half, uh, which went against Iran. But the third change, uh, which coming up, Paul, it's uh, Horvath is limping badly. In actual fact, went down behind play now. The change coming up looks like Skoko is going to come on, but there'll probably be a hold on that just to see how Horvath recovers. Because that's going to be a crucial decision now. If Horvath's, Horvath is stro struggling, the change really has to be held up to just to, to uh, clear him because that could create extra headaches for Australia. As in fact, this is a headache. Bosnich has been superb, absolute superb. Uh, Rated uh, world-class keeper. I think he's proven that tonight. Just everything he's done has been absolute class. Three fabulous saves. Well, it's been quite an, uh, an open game in many ways, surprisingly so, considering the tension and importance of the match. For Iran, we've had just under 25 minutes of the second half. Still 1 1 the score. Madavikia up against Lazaridis. Well, he's such a good player. Tony Vidmar at the back post, a winning header from Tony Vidmar, and he had to win it as well. Sharudi whipping it in. Bosnich! Well, an easy save.
really for a keeper of that caliber clever header back from Mark Maduka Tapai trying to switch play to find Kuehl the ball's fallen nicely for Tony Vidmar still Vidmar still Vidmar nowhere for him to go Zelic will go forward Stand Ned Zelic wide is Foster time to measure the cross very much for Craig Foster Tapai under pressure he didn't really want the ball there he thought that Foster may have knocked the ball in Lazaridis on the left hand side still Lazaridis great run from Lazaridis and the data got there corner Australia but better stuff that is what Australia have to do just to keep the ball a little bit more deny uh, possession to Iran and it's uh, something we haven't done all this first half they've been under enormous pressure they will relieve that pressure by pushing the ball around probing either side and with a, a final attempt on goal as we saw there much better stuff from Australia that is what they have to do for the remaining 20 minutes Kuehl with the corner a goal now to the Socceroos would be quite phenomenal but Abenzada clearance up the park Horvath right underneath it Tapai will bring it down but he's under pressure very quickly still Tapai oh that's brilliant from Ernie Tapai all the way on his own down the right hand side whip the ball across Abenzada was there though but fine stuff from Ernie Tapai look at the pace down the right now from Sadabi corner to Iran the pace of the game hasn't slackened despite the fact that we are well into the second half here Australia have the vital away goal Azizi on the edge of the penalty area. Still Azizi. Still Azizi. Bosnic at the right place once again. As we take another look at Azizi, what a play. He is so dangerous. And Bosnic was well placed at the near post. Australia have a free kick though. to take it though the referee Mr. Pirotti from Italy well he's seen everything there is to see in the game and the free kick's been taken quickly Zelic made fancy chances Baduka's here but he couldn't get a clean head on the ball Mark Baduka great move again Australia quick thinking by Foster and Vidmar over the free kick and Zelic again providing a telling ball Baduka just couldn't quite get up to the cross there from Zelic more signs that Australia have another goal within them as Iran look to make another change Kuehl underneath it he does so well in the air Harry Kuehl Considering that he was playing against much taller opponents. Tapai. Little ball over the top. Can Baduka bring it down? It's running through to the goalkeeper, but the goalkeeper was a little slow coming off his line. And Peravani wasn't prepared to take any risks. The sweeper for Iran plays for Obaman. The local clubs here in Iran but only three of their players play overseas in contrast to so many of the Socceroos whip the ball in here but the flag goes up and Iran are making another change the man to make way is Pashat Zadeh Australia have danger here with Ali Goyi Horvath over the bar and he can shoot from anywhere He's claiming that the ball took a deflection off an Australian on the way through. He found a metre of space for himself there and took the shot. That was really out of corner. And the 
change can now be made. And the player coming on for Iran. No. Yes, it is held up. Gidi comes on for Pashit Zada. We just can't help but checking the clock constantly, and we have just under 15 minutes remaining here. As Foster works his way forward down the right hand side. Zelic in support quickly from the back. Zelic, well, great tackle that from the substitute Majidi, and now Iran on the counter white shirt streaming forward all over the place danger for Australia here who are struggling to get men back and more with the telly tackle Azizi's foul he gets back up on his feet play goes on Azizi in possession twisting and turning to get past Horner as an Australian player down it's Craig Moore in real trouble by the look of things Zelic with the head in of the Duca happy to just pop the ball away. And Australia can now get some attention to Craig Moore, who hasn't moved a millimetre since he went down in the challenge. Australia still have one substitute up their sleeve. Skoko has been warming up, but... Well, the call from Terry Venables is to get a substitute on straight away. And it will be Milan Ivanovic who comes on, I would suggest. Despite the fact he is one of the few Australian bench players who haven't been warming up the whole game. Well, the tension is quite extraordinary here, and I'm sure you're feeling every bit of it in your homes back in Australia in the wee hours of the morning. Kuehl. Well, he's outnumbered, but he's got away with the ball superbly there. Foster. And a late challenge there on Harry Kuehl. Australia down to 10 men just temporarily with Craig Moore. And we're just not sure whether he's coming back on or not. He's limping behind the goal. Play goes on. Zelic in the possession. Foster will take the throw. Craig Moore has gone back on. No room there for Tapai to operate in. Well, you can see that there is around 13 minutes left. A real quandary for Venables, that third change. He's wanting to make a change to bring Skoko on, on it in midfield to try and get a little bit of control of the game. But it just proves that incident then that's just so dangerous to make that third change too early because an injury at the back could uh, mean that a different type of player is needed on the field. Maduka challenging. Lazaridis under the ball. It's a throw in to Iran. It doesn't get any tougher than this in world football when you're trying to qualify for a World Cup. High ball into the area. Bosnich comes and jumping against him was Ali Dayi. What a contest that was in the air. And the handshakes there between two players who are professionals right at the peak of their careers. Sadavi with the cross. Ali Dayi leapt so high there as getting as high as Bosnich. But just not to the ball in front of Bosnich. Duka won't get there. There's Ali Dayi given room to turn against Moore, who may be struggling just a fraction. Tobin is there. No penalty. Despite the appeals from 120,000 referees in the crowd that were absolutely sure that it was. Mr. Perotto didn't hesitate. Maduka's going through here. The keeper's off his line. He didn't know where the ball was, and Maduka, with an ounce of luck there, could have had a great opportunity for Australia. Throw it to the Socceroos. Well, let 
Let's take a look here at Ellie it, it wasn't a penalty. Kewell. Well, no room at all. Tapai given the ball. Really, Zelich could do with that except play the ball forward with his head, which he's done again, but position just lost in the meantime. Iran have a man free down this left-hand side. Closing him down quickly. Here's Tahami, the substitute. Still Tahami going through. Well, it's a free kick to Australia there for the dive by Tahami. And a good decision from the Italian referee who cannot pull the wool over this man's eyes. He's seen too much world football in his time, Pierluigi Pirotto. He's already refereed a number of World Cup qualifiers in Europe this season. Well, that surely is a foul, and it is. Kuehl was climbed all over there by Sharudi. Foster over the ball. Played into the penalty area. Tapai's there. Great run from Ernie Tapai. Waiting for support. A little ball across. No one there for Australia. Paduka was waiting in the centre. Zelic wins it in the air. Helps it onto Stan Lazaridis. Still Lazaridis running past his man. But he's run past his man and into touch and out of room. And a push in the back there from Ali Doye. Well, around eight minutes remaining here at the Azadi. The crowd uh, lighting the candles. As time is very much on Australia's side at the moment. It's Iran that must get a result here. What, what a catastrophe that could have been. As it went across the Australian goal after Tapai just was just too complacent in defence. Well, a football match can turn in an instant. Long shot there. Well, it was closer than it looked. And a fine shot there from Sadavi. Well, anything can happen in this remaining six and a half minutes or so. Kewell will challenge. Maduka running on. Vidmar just hooking it up the centre. This is the crisp winter air of Tehran. Starts to engulf the stadium. Tobin has fouled his man in a dangerous position. The Lights have been on since half time. And Australia now. Well, what can you say? We all know that they must be dreadfully careful from the set piece. Every man behind the ball from an Australian perspective. Ali Doye over the ball. Yellow card there to Tapai for not retreating. And Majidi, the substitute, is over the ball. Hockpur is not too far away. Ali Doye. Australia have a big side. There's a lot of height in the wall, which will help Mark Bosnich, who's covering the left-hand side of the goal. Well, Ali Doye takes it over the wall. My word, that was close from Ali Doye. It was dipping, but not dipping fast enough. Great attempt there from the Iran marksman. And that did not miss by much. Maduka flicking it on Australia. 
have around six minutes to keep their goal intact and to come away with the result and it's it's a word I use with real clarity because it very much is a good result for Australia to come away from here with a 1-1 scoreline Azizi. Oh, cool. Brilliant play from him to skip between a couple. Azizi tracking back. Very similar styles of play from both of them. Fine switch of play. Nice little shimmy from Tahami. Moore gets there first. And he was hoping that the ball would run out for a goal kick, but he just ran out of room there. Ali Dai twisting and turning, getting past Foster. Little with the cross from Tahami, and that's a goal kick. Well, John, there's less than four minutes remaining here. It has been quite a stunning match. It has. Uh, the boys have just absorbed so much pressure. I mean, to, to Mark Bosnich uh, has been fabulous. The defensive uh, uh, triangle there of uh, Horvath Moore and Tobin, but I think it should be stressed this is not an easy environment to play in. This is a, a very, very good Iranian side. They've thrown everything at Australia. Let's hope we can just hang out for those four minutes. As you mentioned, it is a favourable result to get out of here with a 1-1 draw for us. And the free kick goes to Iran. Taken quickly. Hakpur. Madhavikia. It's a great ball there, and it can be kept in, it's pulled back and well defended, another corner to Iran. Graham Arnold will be taking part in the game very shortly. Australia looking to make the substitution quickly to stop the momentum of Iran and attack the corner will be taken, it's a loose ball, chance for Iran here, deflection. Moore will get the ball away. Moore goes down as well, he's limping. Jess has to hang in there a little bit longer. Graham Arnold will be coming on any second with less than three minutes remaining. The corner comes in. No one there for Iran, and it's an Australian free kick. Now, who will make way for Graham Arnold? Harry Kuehl, the goal scorer, is coming off. Graham Arnold likely to slot into perhaps a midfield role. I don't think it matters much. The, the, the reason for this change is just to take the rhythm out of these Iranian attacks. Kuehl taking his time walking off, Arnie taking his time getting on. It just slows. That gives the Aussies that little bit of breather. We've only got three minutes to go and settle things or try to settle things down a little bit. Foster winning the ball in the air. Every loose ball. It's vital that it's won by Australia. Tobin wins another one there. Foster prepared to back himself and bring it down still. Arnold in trouble. Foster bouncing the ball, working favourably for Craig Foster. Arnie making a run to the corner. Great run from Graham Arnold, just working his way down the right-hand line there. The ball goes back to the goalkeeper. Awkward for him, too awkward. Corner to Australia. That is what pressure does. Great effort there from Graham Arnold. Venables on his feet at the bottom of the screen there, giving Foster instructions. On my watch, there's just over 60 seconds of normal time remaining in the game. Corner comes over. Zelich, little ball over the top. Bank stays down. Tapo's onside with the cross, but no one there at the back of the goal. We're not worried about crosses like that at this stage of the game. It wastes a few more seconds. This will be a great result for Australia. I believe they can uh, overcome it in Melbourne. It will be an entirely different game there. Iran had to win this one and had to win it, I believe, by a couple of goals. But uh, it's going to be some night in Melbourne next Saturday evening. You've got an idea now of what Iran is like. They will have their top player back for that match, Bagheri. 
and going to be a night to remember. Let's hope the boys can just hold out this remaining couple of minutes. into the area more well just for a moment there i thought there was confusion between Moore and bidmar but foster's coming away and there is the final whistle australia have got a draw at the azadi stadium in tehran very much a fine result for terry venables and the socceroos it was a game that iran had to really win they were expected to call the shots in so many ways tonight but this really impressive Socceroo performance nullified everything that Iran threw at the Socceroo defence. Mark Bosnich in goal for Australia was the outstanding player tonight. Harry Kuehl scored for the Australian side in the 19th minute. Azizi in your shot there gave everything he had and found an equaliser for Iran six minutes before the break. What a fine player he is. But Iran now know that they are up against it because they must come to the MCG in a week's time and it will be an MCG that is packed to the rafters to see Australia on their way through to France in 1998 phenomenal game here at the Azadi Stadium the final score Iran won Australia won now let's cross back to Les Murray Thank you, Paul, and we will be hoping to cross back to Carl Patterson in a moment, hopefully with uh, Terry Venables. A good result. Remember, of course, that that means that a nil-nil in Melbourne next week will be enough for Australia. The aggregates being level, the away goals will count, away goal will count double for Australia. We have a winner in our goal time competition for you, and the winner was uh, Craig Rossiter of Abermain in New South Wales. Uh, he picked the exact time of the first goal, which was 18 minutes and 46 seconds. And uh, remember that uh, the competition will apply for the second match in Melbourne. It's called Goal Time. Pick the time of the first goal in Australia's next match and win $1,000. 0055 297 00. 0055 297 00. You can call that any time and make your entry. Here are the details of the next match, Australia versus Iran. The tickets are available if you call in Victoria, 11500, Remember, there'll be no live coverage in Melbourne unless it's a sellout. And, uh, of course, Australia does need your support in that second match. Australia-wide, uh, the other number was, was on your screen. There are the uh, telecast details. It'll, the match will kick off at 8.15 Eastern Summer Time, and it'll be live in all areas except Melbourne. Okay. Rally Rasic, your thoughts on the outcome, and it was uh, uh, not an easy thing to achieve. Excellent result, not great match, but uh, you wouldn't wish anything better than uh, the one well, I thought it was a good match. I mean, it was a thrilling match. It wasn't yes, uh, uh, Iran, quality Iran football. dominated most of the game. Superb skills uh, under very difficult condition, playing conditions. That field is absolutely shocking. But uh, two exceptions in their team, the goalkeeper and the... Uh, are they absolutely fantastic footballer, you know, modern football, typical European player, and, uh, you know, any, any coach would Ali love Day, to do he was, he, was, yeah. he was fantastic. E excellent. All right, Rally, thank you. Uh, Carl Patterson is standing by on the sidelines. Is he not? No, he's not. Okay. Uh, Ray, your, um, uh, your views on the second half? Uh, well, on the overall game, first off, less sensational result for Australia. I, I think... Uh, uh, Terry would be more than happy to come away with 1-1 and as you say, we can go to Melbourne now and even draw 0-0 and still get through. So, um, disappointed in some players. I think uh, Moore had a poor game at fullback. Um, Robbie I'm disappointed in. Uh, but by the same token, it's easy to sit in an armchair and be an armchair uh, <laughs> well, critic. That's right. Uh, Having there to soak that, that up. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an enormous pressure the boys are under. And uh, I, c I can't understand some of our leading journalists making light of the fact because uh, unless they've been there, they cannot imagine the immensity of the task. Yeah, how did, how did you see it, Charlie? I mean, I mean, it was very difficult to play against a team throwing that much at you for 45 minutes. Well, that's what tends to happen. You get into that situation where you have a result and you don't want to lose that result. And it was great that we scored early, then they came and scored, and then what you, it's a human nature thing is you tend to sit back. 
Um, and, uh, you know, so many times that we've actually gone into that situation. I've played it in many occasions. And it doesn't matter. You, you, your mind's saying, look, we've got to get forward, but your body just isn't doing it. And that's what is actually making it a lot harder. And, uh, but it's all, all credit. I mean, it's absolutely a magnificent result. The pressure was there throughout. We anticipated that was going to happen. I actually thought it was going to die down. I, di I didn't think the Iranian players were capable of throwing it at us for that long. But obviously the crowd was right behind them, put a lot of pressure on us, and the boys were able to absorb it. Magnificent result. I think the game in Melbourne will be the other way around. I think our boys will go out there and prove another point that they can do the same thing to the Iranians as what they did to, to them here. OK, let's have a look at that... Uh highlight that we kept for you from the second half which was the contentious uh, penalty claim uh, what did you think Ray? No definitely not, uh, Tobin played the ball uh, and I think the play if you look at it closely the player's gone over Tobin's leg Charlie? Uh, you know, I mean anything can happen in these games it was 1-1, uh, um, it was a hard decision and I'm sure the referee at that point in time was sort of probably um, not quite sure that it was a clear um, tackle, like I said I've seen uh, penalties for worse things than that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, anything could happen. Rally, uh, we look ahead to next Saturday night in, in Melbourne. You've got 1-1 one, one in the bag. What would you be doing? I think Terry will do the, exactly the same thing, except he will attack much more because score nil all would take us to France. And it's all about result. It's not about yeah. how pretty, how good technically, tactically the game is. It's aim is to get to France 100% certain that we will achieve it and achieve with the result. And I think we will definitely play better and different game at MCG than we played uh, play tonight. And I'm not taking anything away from the team, yeah. the way they perform, because as Ray pointed out, pressure in Tehran, it's a hell. And it's uh, extremely difficult for any footballer in the world, to, in much better footballers than now, to, to, to sustain that pressure. And yet, you have a world-class goalkeeper in our goal. I mean, you must... You must give credit to Bosnia. It's absolutely sensational. Well, we've, we've got a good history of, of those uh, goalkeeper, goalkeeping performances. Jimmy Fraser gave you a couple uh, in the 73 World Cup campaign. That he, do, that's what he climbs even today. <laughs> that's I'm sure he does. <laughs> but, but Ray, it's still a bit dangerous, isn't it? Because uh, we, we're probably happy that it's 1-1. But if they score, you know, uh, first 10 well. minutes... Uh, it's it's uh, we're back to square one. Back to square so one. So we have to be uh, careful. Well, not even square one. We're further back than square yeah. one if they score first. That's right. So uh, we definitely need to hold that hold that result. I think I think it's very similar to what we went. We went, we went when we went to Tehran. We went with a three nil lead, and we were quite happy to hold on to that. And uh, two nil for us was as good as a ten nil win. Uh, and I think the same situation this time. If Australia come away with a nil nil, it's as good as a ten nil win because as Rally says the result is everything. It's getting there is the yeah. main thing. How you get there is irrelevant. Yeah. So uh, I, I just hope that uh, uh, our supporters can get behind our team yeah. in Melbourne next week the way the Iranian supporters get behind their team, and they are fabulous, absolutely fabulous. They are, they are. Well, I'm sure, sure our supporters will, and I do remember that uh, fabulous game against Scotland in 85 yeah. in Melbourne, which where the supporters were, were as really gave Australia as much as uh, anybody would have wanted. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us uh, tonight. Charlie, thanks for your help. Ray yeah, Richard, thank, thank you. you. Rally Refsic, thank you for your insights tonight. And uh, there won't be a, a, a cross to Carl Patterson, I'm afraid, because we've got uh, major technical problems again, so we won't be hearing from Terry Venables just tonight. Uh, that's our telecast on game one of the two-match series. Remember, it's just halftime. The story concludes next Saturday evening at the Melbourne Cricket Ground in front of, we hope, a capacity crowd. We'll be back to rerun extended highlights tomorrow morning at 11.30, right after Italian football, and we'll have comprehensive reports through the week on Toyota World Sports, weeknights at 7. And we'll be back with full coverage of the second leg next Saturday night. Till then, from the World Game, good night. Can't you see the